What's up? How are you? Are you ready? I thought I'd bring you in on this decision. I am a pastor, as many of you know, and if you don't know, I am a pastor of a wonderful church in Northern Virginia called the Victory House. And right now it is snowing and there are reports like these. There's of snow in St. Louis. The problem is it came in hard and fast, especially yesterday afternoon when it caused absolute gridlock. Major interstates closed. Ice, car crashes all across really middle of the United States. And so it's a Saturday night. Tomorrow is Sunday morning. It's snowing right now, and it's supposed to snow all the way through the night to the morning. So we really can't call anything tonight because today the roads are still okay. It's really what happens between the hours of 7 p.m. and 7 a.m., Saturday to Sunday. And I just wanted to bring you in on this decision-making because there's a lot of decisions that you have to make being the leader of um, a church. And there's many different types of decisions. There's ministry decisions. There's hiring decisions. There's firing decisions. There's financial decisions. There's, there's staff decisions. There's all these different decisions that you have to make. Like you, you have to make a million decisions. I totally get that. But there's, this is one of those decisions that I just don't like making. And I kind of want to bring you in on the process of how I think about these decisions of whether to cancel church or to hold our normal service, which is 10 o'clock on Sunday at 520 East Main Street in Percival, Virginia. And if you're looking it up on Surrey, it's Purcellville, not Percival. Anyway, Purcellville. So Percival. And um, so, so in this, when there's reports like this, snow, ice, car crashes, fatalities, all those kinds of things that are going on. And the storm is headed your way. Now they started where they said two to four inches, not a big deal. Then they said three to five inches. Now it's five to 10 inches. And some say ice, some don't say ice. And so now it brings it down to what do we do? So there's a couple different, I think, mindsets when it comes into do you hold church or not? So there's the kind of the old fashioned mindset of, of get to church, do or die, brave the storm, get there. Um, I'm not against that necessarily. If you're in the right area, maybe all your people live within like, like a half mile. But the Victory House is unique that not only do we have people from Percival, but we have people really from four counties, including our own Loudoun County, Clark County, Frederick County, and Fairfax County all drive in. So you could have families driving in from 25 miles away to come to the Victory House. And um, I'm honored that they do. And I, I believe there's a responsibility in that to, to make a call. Do we hold service or we do not hold service? Um, you know, maybe, maybe the answer to that is somebody would say, well, allow people to make a decision for themselves. And um, you know, church is one of those interesting things that because it's spiritual and, you know, sometimes people will feel the, 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 it, they'll feel that it's necessary to be there, um, kind of life or limb. And that kind of worries me. I remember growing up and that was sort of, as I remember, which might not be right, but because I was a kid, it was like, we were at church, rain snow, sleet, whatever. I remember coming home from church on, I think it was a Wednesday night or a Sunday night. And we had a Chevy Caprice V8 engine, real world drive. Just, it, it just, and that thing could not make it up our hill. I remember getting stuck coming up our hill to where we lived. And as a little kid, you're like, oh my gosh, it's in this process that I want to make a decision that's best for the church and it's best for everyone involved. Um, there are thoughts I think that pastors have. They go, well, if we don't have service, what if we, we don't get the, the finances that we need? Sometimes, um, not everybody, and, um, and I hope not at TVH, but you know, some people, when they don't have service, they don't go to, well, we don't have to you know, give our tithe this week. We don't have to give our offering this week. And um, so I think some pastors feel that pressure. I, I'm just kind of of the school there that, that the Lord is faithful and he's going to, to bless um, um, hit the work of, uh, of his hands. And so if we're doing the work of his hands, he's going to bless us. Um, but that definitely, that definitely can be a pull for people. Um, I think when I come down to the risk of lives, 
of lives. They say that lives. And I think of everybody coming in and if it's iffy for people and there were, God forbid, a horrible tragic accident, it would be because I decided that it was that we had. And I, and I get you can't control every you can't really control much of anything. But, you know, if I'm pushing to get to church and it's dangerous conditions and somebody were getting into a car accident, and there was a fatality um, and I'm the one that has to do the funeral, you know, Maybe they would choose somebody else, but you know, it falls onto that lead pastor. It falls onto that um, person, the responsibility of their congregation. And, and that would just be tragic. Um, so that goes through my mind any time, every year, every time there's a snowstorm. And um, I wish the snowstorms were like on Monday. I don't know why they always fall like on Saturday, Sunday, but just Monday, Lord, Monday. The risk of lives, um, it, it really gets down to that. Do we feel like we want a whole church open um, and, and risk people coming out, getting in a car accident, et cetera, et cetera? Um, and so I, I, what I try to do is I look at all the weather reports and, but you know, the weather people, I mean, they could be like, they could be like, it's going to snow 10 feet and it's sunny or it's, you know, it's sunny and then it snows 10 feet. So it, it's really trying to get a feel for the area. Now, when I think about how the, the roads are plowed, I think of it in two ways, main roads and side roads. And so families that live off the main road, they have to get out. And then, um, you know, if main roads are usually done, great. But if now, if the main roads aren't done, easy decision, we cancel church. Um, but if the main roads are done and the side roads are somewhat done, what do you do? All right, so what I'm doing is I'm going out and I'm going to kind of just assess the roads at 736. PM, and I'll show you what I'm seeing. So anyway, I go back and forth on this because I, I really do feel the responsibility and the weight. And I want to be a good shepherd for my people and not have the do or die, get to church mentality that, you know, if we miss a Sunday, all, you know, all's going to blow up in smoke, you know. Um, but I also, oh, I remember one year, I, I, it was like snow and ice and I canceled church. And I think... I think by like nine o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock in the morning, the sun came out and melted everything. It was like, I was like, oh, what did I do? Um, so I'm just bringing you in on this. I haven't decided yet. I'm not going to decide till tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. Is, is the deadline. We sent out an email to everyone. Um, no other churches in our area that just go through it and that, that's fine they have to do what's best for them that's fine but I I do not like this decision this is not a fun decision because um, I like when we come together I like when the family when we party with Jesus um, so just thought I'd bring you in on the the kind of the little the tug of war of what's the right decision and uh, well we're gonna see what happens and uh so God bless, the journey continues.